The pre-order date has arrived, so if you are interested in picking up the new Chaos Codex or the new Chaos Combat Patrol, then go now, go, what are you waiting for? Go pick it up, but do come back because today we are gonna be looking at the next in the list of detachments that are coming in this new codex, and one which I think is quite possibly gonna to prove to be one of, if not the best out of the lot of them. And this is the demon engine focused list with a strong influence from not only the big man Vashtor himself, but a list that will really buff up things like your Mauler and your Forge Fiends, your Helldrakes, your Venom Crawlers, and then even things like your Defilers and your Lord of Skulls. And so yesterday we are looking at the Soul Forged War Pack, and the rule for this detachment, which is called Debt to the Soul Forge, this allows you, when you make a Dark Pact, to invoke your contract. And what that means is when you do this with one of your demon vehicle units, which as just mentioned is your Mauler Fiends, your Forge Fiends, your Helldrakes, your Venom Crawlers, um, and your Defilers, when you do that, you subtract one from the leadership test for your Dark Pact roll, but then whether you pass that leadership roll or not, you gain plus one to your wound rolls for ranged attacks or plus two attacks to your melee weapons if you do it in the fight phase until the end of the phase. Now, as a very quick reminder, Dark Pact is your army rule and this basically lets you choose whenever a unit shoots or fights to give that unit either lethal or sustained hits one. Now, you do need to take a leadership test when you do this and if you fail that test, you take D3 Mortal Wounds, but you do always get the buff whether you fail or not. So this does add some risk to those tests because you are making them at minus one leadership now, and it means that on things like your Fiends, you are gonna need to be rolling a seven plus rather than a six plus to pass those tests, or you will risk taking the Mortal Wounds. But still, that is average dice rolling on 2d6, so you are still going to get it off a good number of times. And the benefits of not only getting those lethal or sustained hits from the army rule, but then on top of that, the plus one to wound for your ranged attacks or plus two attacks in melee, to me, it makes the risk of those d3 mortals massively, massively worth it. It is just going to monumentally boost the output from all of your demon engines and you in this list will be running a lot of them. You will want to maximize these demon vehicles as much as you possibly can just to push through as many of these buffs onto them as you possibly can. As a quick example, moving something like a Mauler Fiend to plus two attacks and say sustained hits from your army rule means that you can be making eight attacks at strength 14 minus two AP and D6 plus one damage with their fists. And then thanks to those sustained hits, you could be getting nearly seven hits from those attacks. With the Lasher Tendrils on top of that, you can make a really strong, terrifying, pure melee monster. And with those buffs on them, you can expect your Mauler Fiend with the fists and the Lasher Tendrils to do something in the region of around 15 damage to an Imperial Knight, which for their cost, is a really good amount of output. So for me, I just think the detachment rule combos really, really well with the army rule, and it is gonna make running a lot of demon engines a truly scary prospect for your opponent, because yes, you will likely take a few mortal wounds over the course of the game on various vehicles here and there, but it is genuinely such a strong boost to your melee and your ranged output. It is going to push a lot of the demon engines from the yeah, they're kind of okay category to the yes, they are actually a really, really solid worthwhile unit now. So on top of the detachment rule being really, really good, we do of course get the usual four enhancements and six stratagems. The enhancements are all fairly good to a degree, but there is one that is really good. And so we're going to save that one for last. First up, we have invigorating mecha tendrils, which is warp smith only and it just grants a very simple extra four inches of move to a Warpsmith. This is fairly unexciting to be fair, but it is very good. Warpsmiths are going to be your bread and butter in this detachment. They can move up, they can heal your vehicles, and they can also give them plus one to hit with their abilities as well. So giving them that extra four inches of move and bringing them from a six inch to a 10 inch move will really help them to stay up and stay in range 
with your vehicles as they move up the board and just get all of those buffs and heals on them every single turn. The Warpsmith is an HQ you're going to be bringing in this detachment anyway, so just using this enhancement to make sure they can keep up with the rest of the types of units you're going to be bringing and just bring their buffs and auras to as many of your units as possible over the course of the game is just going to be very, very worthwhile, I think. Forge's Blessing is again a really nice enhancement to put on a Warpsmith. It lets you choose a vehicle within 12 inches of them in your command phase, and then until your next command phase, that vehicle gets a 6-up Feel No Pain. This is just all round really nice and solid. It may not seem like a huge improvement, but putting a 6-up Feel No Pain onto something like a 12-wound Mauler Fiend, or even a 9-wound Vellum Crawler, will just allow them to stick around that much longer. For the Mauler and the Forge Fiend, it's essentially like giving them two extra wounds. So being able to do that in your command phases is going to be really, really useful. And again, I think it just definitely pushes you towards bringing Warp Smiths so that you can buff up and heal your vehicles and just make them as durable and powerful as they possibly can be. Soul Harvester is next, and I would say this is probably the weakest of the bunch. It's again a fairly simple one. It's just a gain a CP on a 5+, plus, and you roll for this when an enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer is destroyed. So I mean, it's not awful. Extra CP is always a good thing to have, but requiring you to be within 12 inches of a unit that has been destroyed means it's not likely to happen until turn 2 or 3 at best, and then even then, it's only on a 5+, plus. So this is basically going to net you maybe one or two extra command points over the course of a game if you're lucky. So I think this could be one to skip if you really wanted to uh, to go for the other enhancements. If you are finding yourself using a lot of stratagems and running out of CP, this could be worth taking just to try and farm those few extra ones. But as I said, I think this is probably the most skippable one out of the four. And then we come to the fourth one, which I think is the best, Tempting Addendum. This, in my opinion, is just kind of nuts. You give it to a Warpsmith, and then whenever a demon vehicle within three inches of them invokes their contract, as per the detachment rule, you add one to any mortal wound it suffers from the Dark Pact. So if you fail that leadership test, you could potentially be taking four mortal wounds on a vehicle with this. So there is a downside, but then whether you pass or fail, that vehicle gets to re-roll their hit rolls. So now your vehicles can potentially be getting sustained hits one, plus two attacks, and re-rolling all of their hit rolls. And something like the aforementioned Mauler Fiend from earlier that was doing around 14 or 15 damage to an Imperial Knight, with this enhancement and the Warp Smith nearby to give it plus one to hit, they can now reliably re-roll all of its hits to fish for those sustained hits, and it means you can now on average do about 20 to 21 wounds to that same knight. So even just on one vehicle, it's a really good improvement. But this isn't just you choose a vehicle for it to go on. This is an aura. So it affects every vehicle that is within three inches of your warpsmith. So the fact that this can affect multiple vehicles and you can get this on two or three vehicles like maybe Forge Fiends and just have them all chucking out a disgusting amount of firepower all at plus one to wound with the detachment rule and re-rolling all of their hit rolls. It is just so incredibly strong. I would say this would be a good enhancement even if it was just you selected one demon engine to, to do it on, but the fact that this can hit multiple because it is an aura just makes it a must take in my opinion, and I really do think that you will see this on a warp smith every single time you run this detachment probably surrounded by three Forge Fiends just for all of those rerolls to hit. So, I mean, so far, the detachment rule is great. The enhancements are all fairly decent, with only one which is a little bit questionable. But what about the stratagems? Well, like the previous detachment we looked at the other day, these are all one CP, which is always a win. It means you can get quite a lot of them off over the course of the game. And we have one battle tactic, one epic deed, and a whopping four strategic ploy stratagems to play around with. Desperate Pledge is the first, and in the shooting or fight phase, you choose a demon vehicle, and if it has invoked its contract, you get a bonus of plus one AP to their weapons. This is a nice solid bit of output, and it can bring you to some key breakpoints at minus three AP for the Morlefine Fists, or minus two AP for the Heldrake's Bale Flamer. The fact that you do have to invoke your contract 
is a bit annoying, I guess, but to be honest, you are likely going to be doing that every chance you get anyway because of the detachment buffs, so it's not a huge deal, and I still think it is a very good 1 CP strat just to chain a load of those things together. You know, you can get some really good snowballing combos with sustained hits, plus 1 to wound, full rerolls to hit from a warp smith, plus 1 to hit from the warp smith, and then that extra AP to really just put through as much damage onto an enemy unit as you need. Unstoppable Rampage is a movement or charge phase stratagem, and it allows you to move an Astartes vehicle through terrain as if it wasn't there. This is really, really solid, not only for getting you around the board more easily, you can ignore terrain, which is really handy on vehicles that can typically be bogged down or tied up or just inconvenienced by how the board is laid out. But the key thing for me is that this is also in the charge phase. So you can now just yeet that Mauler Fiend right through a wall and charge into a unit that thought they were safely tucked away, you know, avoiding any charges because there were some terrain between them and your Mauler Fiend. You can just now ignore that and get into a unit that really wasn't expecting to be in combat. It's a really, really great stratagem and it will allow your melee focused vehicles specifically to get into combat so much more easily and really mess up with your opponent's plans if they're trying to keep a squad safe behind terrain. Glut of Souls is for a demon vehicle excluding Titanic, so this won't be for your Lord of Skulls, but this lets you in the fight phase roll a dice for each enemy model that you destroyed up to a maximum of 6, and then on each 5 plus you regain a lost wound. Again, this is only if you've invoked your contract, but this could be a really good way to regen some of the damage you might have taken when you did invoke your contract if you failed that leadership test, or if the enemy has just put a few wounds onto you, getting back up to 6 is quite a big deal and it should be fairly easy to do with your melee units, especially if you're going into things like marines or guardsmen that you can kill quite easily and kill quite a lot of. This could quite reliably get you a good 3 or 4 wounds back in a single combat phase, which will really help your demon vehicles just keep going and keep trucking and keep killing things that much longer. So this is again I think a really good stratagem, either using it to regen the wounds that you've taken from failed leadership tests, or just to kind of replace the damage that has been done to you from enemy squads. I think it's really useful and you can use it quite reliably to keep your guys going that much longer. Up next we have Predatory Pursuit. This is another simple yet effective stratagem. In your opponent's movement phase, after an enemy unit has moved, advanced, or fallen back, if a vehicle is within 9 inches of that unit and not in engagement range of anything else, that unit can make a move of 6 inches, but it must end the move closer to the enemy unit. So this isn't going to allow you to fall back and get further away from enemy charges or anything, it's not a way to keep your unit safe per se, but if an enemy unit has fallen back, you can chase after them and set yourself up for an easier charge next turn, or you could use this to make a move to block units that were maybe heading towards an objective, or just get some generally better positioning for your vehicles. It is a bit situational, but it can be really strong in the right circumstances, and it really can help, if nothing else, you to put some pressure on an enemy unit that maybe doesn't want to be in combat with you, so they've fallen back. You can just chase after them and be like, you're not getting away from me because I can now move 6 inches and basically get an almost guaranteed charge on you next turn again to get you back into combat with me. Demonic Possession is next, and I think this is quite an interesting one. For 1 CP in your command phase, you can choose a non-demon vehicle, and it gains the demon keyword. This can be really strong on some of the vehicles that you have that you may want to take that aren't demons. Given something like the Hellbrute, the ability to interact with the detachment rule, could give you plus two attacks from the detachment rule and also a bonus two attacks from the Hellbrute's own rule which is devoted to destruction. So if you are running a pure melee Hellbrute, this could net you something like 12 attacks with its power scourge, so things can get pretty nutty with it. And even on things like Predators or Vindicators, like your ranged tanks, that plus one to wound you can now access to is going to really help you push that damage through onto the enemy. So whilst I don't think you will be using this strat every single turn, I think it's really good being able to give the detachment rule essentially to one of your other vehicles 
can be a really good force multiplier for them and it can make bringing some non-demon vehicles in this list worthwhile because you can give them that big boost just when you need it and just when the time is right to get the most amount of damage out of them. Finally, we have Feeding Frenzy. This one is okay. It's used when an enemy unit, but not a monster or vehicle, tries to fall back from one of your demon vehicle units. And they essentially have to take a desperate escape test when they do so. And if they are battle shocked, that test is at minus one. So I mean, this can be cheeky if you've got a big blob of models that don't want to be in melee and they really want to fall back to go after an objective they can potentially be risking losing a lot of models by wanting to fall back. But I think again, it's quite niche. You definitely aren't going to be wiping out entire squads with this unless your opponent is really unlucky. But I think because your opponent is going to know the risks, especially if their unit is battle shocked and they know they're going to be taking that test at minus one, they're probably just going to think, you know what, I will stay in combat. I won't risk the desperate escape. I will just try and do a bit more chip damage to, to this enemy unit and not bother falling back at all. So I think it's a strat that can be really powerful and the threat of it I think is the main play because your opponent may not want to fall back because of the threat of this stratagem, but I think actually using it, you're probably not gonna get the chance to do it all that often because your opponent knowing it's there, they just won't want to fall back anyway. So I mean, yes, it's good from that perspective, but I think it's more of a, it's there to kind of act as a deterrent for your opponent rather than actually a strat you will want to use all the time. So I guess in a way, it does get use. It, get, it gets used by not being used because the sheer threat of it being there is often enough to warrant your opponent not wanting to do what, what sets the strat off, if that makes sense. So it is good in a way. I just don't think it's one you're actually going to be spending CP on very often. And that is the Soul Forged Warpack. I really like this detachment. I love the idea of a load of big, stompy demon engines and vehicles moving up, supported by warp smiths who are just buffing them and healing them at the wazoo, and then just shooting or charging into the enemy and unleashing a huge number of attacks and really strong and potent shooting to just really mess up the enemy. Of course, with this detachment, Vashtor does have to be a consideration. He isn't a demon vehicle, so he doesn't actually get any of the buffs from the detachment, but he does provide some okay boosts. He's got a rule called Unholy Mechanisms, which is a six inch aura that boosts the strength of weapons in demon vehicle units by one. So you can again get to some fairly scary breakpoints there. And I think if you are running this detachment, He's worth considering, if nothing else, he can be good in terms of adding some value, but if nothing else, he's a very thematic addition to this detachment. So if you are running it, probably worth trying him at least a couple of times just to see if he does work out for you. But in general, I think going really heavy on the demon vehicles, going really heavy on the warp smiths, maybe having a couple of regular vehicles there just for that demonic possession strat as well, is going to make you a very strong, very durable, and very scary army. It's just gonna be this wall of living corrupted metal that can just barrel down on your opponent and rip or shoot them to pieces with absolute ease, which to me just sounds extremely fun. But as always, I'd really love to know what you think of this detachment and which of the demon engines are you most looking forward to trying out in it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me, but until next time, I'll catch you later guys.